Hello everyone, I'm Alejandra Otero. I'm here today to reflect with you on a very interesting topic. Are we ready for the educational needs of next generations? Well, first of all, who are these next generations? So we're talking about the Zs and the Alphas. So Zs, easy, the ones after millennials, they are right now in high school or in uni. Now, Alphas are the ones born after 2010. So the generation after Z. These ones are actually either kids, toddlers, or babies, and they are expecting us to adapt. That's it. They were born with having everything at their hands. They have very little patience. They are very tech savvy. They control technology since a very early age, and they have a high interest in social media. It's a reality that TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram, all of those different social media have been created for these generations. And why is that? Because they needed a space where parents are not. So trust me, none, are, none of them are actually interested in Facebook. Now, let's do a very quick test. If I ask you to take a picture and show how you do it, you, like me, very likely will just do this, right? Well, ask that to a, an alpha or to a Z. They will look at you like, what's wrong with you? They will take a picture like this. It's a selfie, right? So the behavior has fully changed. Now, COVID has come as an accelerator for not only that generation, of course, for all of them, but we'll see how this has been the catalyzer to an integration between the different generations. So this particular event being COVID actually pushed us to go on remote learning. That's different from online learning. Schools were not prepared to actually just hop online from one day to the other. So what happened? They actually took all of their um, content and they put it on the cloud. That's remote, that's not online. And that's not what these kind of kids are actually expecting. Also, what happened is that teachers were usually left alone. They didn't have the proper training to start on this kind of new framework that we're looking at um, with online or remote studies. Last but not least, all of us had and are having still to unlearn to be able to relearn. Now, of course, all of us maybe uh, would have been living this in a perhaps very different situation than this generations. Why is that? Because they have this component, right? So maybe they were just expecting for this kind of events to actually happen and make them like step up, make all of these other generations step up to the game and actually being able to provide them with what they're looking for. Now, be careful. They just don't want things to happen that way. They want everything to happen in a sustainable and positive way. Why is that? Because they're looking for meaning and purpose. And we ought to be able to transfer that knowledge to them, taking into consideration all of these other events. They're looking for cool things. So things that are personalized, that are trendy, that have been influenced by people they follow. But be careful. They are the generation that doesn't want things to be to this or to that. So we need to find how to actually be able to fit whatever they are looking for. So let's have a look at how we can do that and how is the future of education and work evolving so we can adapt for these generations. So we're seeing a new paradigm and we're going to go through two different um, scenarios that will or are starting to happen at, at the moment. So we're looking at liquid learning in the one hand and we're looking at liquid work on the other hand. So what's that? Let's go with liquid uh, learning first. So liquid learning, imagine just drops of education, right? Where you can actually select specific skills instead of just taking those discipline specific courses throughout a whole year and to take the, the traditional education programs. Now, from now on, whatever you'll see on the left is the new learning paradigm. Whatever you see on the right is traditional education, right? So how are we seeing this? Well, we're seeing a very interesting change 
We're focusing on strengths rather than on weaknesses. How many of you were good at math in school? I wasn't, sorry, I need to be very clear on that. And yet I was forced to get better and better and better. Well, guess what? Sorry, <laughs> math is not my strength. And even if I was pushed to do that, it actually felt even worse because they were pushing me to be better at something I was not good at. So I understand that from a traditional education perspective, but nowadays, why don't we focus on the strengths to actually be able to foster those strengths instead of focusing on the weaknesses? That's one point. Then another thing, we're looking at digital portfolios where these kids can actually showcase their skills. That goes against the traditional resume or CV and the degrees that, let's be honest, are just in our parents' office to make them proud, right? Now, another point for this liquid learning, we're talking about peer-to-peer -peer collaboration instead of cheating. In traditional education, if you help your uh, classmate, you're cheating. No, sorry, we need to understand that not only students need to be able to help themselves, but also professors. And this is part of the circular economy. So this can only be the beginning of a big phenomenon. We need to empower kids instead of blaming them for grades. Grades, in my opinion, that's not the, the path for these generations. Now, sense of belonging versus obligation. If these kids are actually collaborating, they feel part of a community. Otherwise, they're just, they just feel obliged to go to school. They're not happy about it. They fail. Now, they feel trusted and they have safe relationship. How many times we've been discussing the opposite right now about how bullying and shame are actually very, very big um, phenomena that we're seeing right now in uh, education. So we need to make sure to have a safe environment from them that is triggered by this peer-to-peer -peer collaboration. Another point, adaptive and on-demand learning versus mass content. Once again, we're talking about liquid learning. Liquid with the drops, imagine just education bites. So you just go and take this and that whenever you need it. Instead of having the whole class with everyone and same content for everyone. So how can we see that? We see it through project-based learning instead of the typical A, B, C multiple choice. So in that sense, we're pushing for critical thinking, for soft skills, a hard skill, et cetera, et cetera. And it's actually happening with true elements. Same thing, experiential learning. Instead of just focusing on theory, on prescription and on hierarchy, the professor is here, the student is here. No, sorry, this is over. We are change makers. We are just playing together to find a better future. Students and parents and professors. So this is the new liquid learning environment. Now let's have a look at the future because these kids nowadays will have to work in the future. So let's look at this new phenomena of liquid work, which is where and how they would need to um, enter the workspace afterwards. So we're looking at a trend, which is co-learning, co-working, co-living spaces versus the traditional classroom, office, or flat. What does this mean? We are only changing at the moment, and these kids need to be aware of that, and they need to embrace that. They will need to adapt throughout their whole life. That's very different from previous generations looking for stability. Now, what about the professors, as we call them? Well, for this new generation, we're talking about learning guides or mentors or coach. Now, if we compare that to the previous generations, there's still a lot of tenured professors who are just there with a very solid experience, but most of it is theory. And these kids need practice. So this is the reality. We're just looking at real world topics versus accredited topics. And this is a an important one to understand. A lot of schools are, and a lot of parents are very focused on accreditations. Yes, but you also need to know that accreditations are very rigid and they don't enable schools to change the curriculum like that. So innovation is not 
part of the core of an accreditation. So this is also very important because we're having this bias. Last but not least, we're looking at lifelong learning. What is that? Throughout your whole life, in different moments, just having those skills and going back to the education I need instead of just those single use courses we're just simply used to, right? So if we take that to the future of work, we're looking at shaping leaders so they can inspire instead of having boss or bosses who can impose things to people. The level of engagement will just be way better if we look at this rather than that. And lastly, we're looking at helping these kids on this journey of becoming for them to be self-directed instead of just making sure that they survive, they, that they are complacent. We want our kids, the generation of the future, not only to survive, but actually to thrive. So this is it. I hope you have enjoyed this. Thank you very much. I'm here for any questions you might have.